This is more Mountain Maidu up in here. Uh, you heard uh, my uncle talk earlier about uh, Yohama uh, being his great great grandmother. Uh, this is a picture of her right here. Uh, she, she was never captured like he had stated before. I mean, uh, some people say that's why some some of us aren't suddenly recognized. I'm into, I'm starting to become into the language so much that it's, it's starting to uh, uh, be consuming. Uh, I, I, I'm in a uh, culture and language class out here at View College, and uh, the first thing that my professor told me was that the DNA has no, has no play into language, that uh, once you, it's all in your brain, you have to relearn it. Uh, but to me, I'm a true believer that uh, language and past things always stay in your DNA. And so when I start to learn the language, it starts to become uh, consuming by... Language is culture, and culture is language to me. So what, once I start to remember the language, because I don't have to relearn it, uh, to me it, it's all just a remembering phase, which is, it'll take time, but it's still there. Um, it's in the DNA. And so once, once I learn the language or little parts of the language, uh, the culture starts to come in, and then when it starts the, cult the culture starts to come, that is what comes the most consuming because I want to know, every human wants to know where they're from or uh, what's the basis of even being here on Earth. So once I start doing the language, uh, as my family will say, that uh, I get addicted to it. Uh, I stay up for days, weeks, uh, I think the longest I stayed up was like my eight days. And in front of the computer, doing nothing but research, 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 and then coming to school and uh, doing whatever. Falling asleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, what it what it does is, uh, I there's another Navajo student uh, out here on campus, uh, and we were talking, and what it is is, uh, it's like there's a missing link, there's a missing part. Uh, if you if a human being doesn't know who they are or where they're from then I think that uh, they will always be uh, lost. Not lost, something was lost, but they'll always be looking for something. And with, with me meeting my uncle and starting to do language, things are starting to become complete to where it's even reflecting into my son, to where my son speaks better than I do. He'll correct me when I say something wrong. And, you know, he's only like 10. And then it goes back to um, uh, sometimes my dad, when I was little, would teach me things, and I would, wouldn't listen. But then, uh, when I start doing the culture and stuff, what he taught me uh, starts to show up into the culture. And I don't know if he knows he's doing it or if he doesn't. So, it, it gets uh, emotional. I get, uh, um, like I said, it's overwhelming, especially when I do the language. Uh, and then I stand up and we, we sing at these culture events and my son... Uh, does the same as me. Um, in 1990, the United States government passed the Native American Language Act. Um, in here, it has some stuff in here. Uh, they basically did it because they noticed that a, not, a lot of Native American languages were disappearing or going extinct, or there was only four or five speakers, or uh, maybe even one. Um, when I first began the language, I only knew of uh, two speakers. Uh, then, then I started to learn uh, that there was more, but they're all, they've all passed away. So it's, as I feel in my generation, to, to bring things back is that we have to look deeper and harder than uh, elders look, than even, even older people look, because a lot of us in, of my generation believe that we're the last... Uh, we're the last link to the past or to who we are. Once, once we're gone, and, and some of us have never taught uh, our children or our nieces or our nephews anything, then who's there to teach? There, there's nobody to teach. And then you have some uh, Native Americans from local tribes who don't uh, appreciate 
the things that uh, that I'm doing, the language or the storytelling or bringing the culture out because they say those are ours to keep. But if there's nobody out there sharing our culture or sharing the language, then how else is, is anybody else going to know about it? Because once it goes away, then it's gone forever. And in my opinion, if we teach more and more people about the culture, about the history of Native Americans, about the local Native Americans here in Northern California, the history, the culture, and the language will never go away. Even if they're archived, uh, they'll be there and they'll get all dusty. But if, if it is taught to a, a living being and always uh, stuck in their head, somehow it'll process into their DNA. And then uh, they, they'll always remember it. They're, they'll, it will never be forgotten. Kind of like Spanish. Uh, the Spanish came over from Europe. That's the reason why most uh, Hispanic people or Mexican people speak Spanish. But it is also mixed with Nahuatl, which is a Native American language, just south of the border Native American language. Uh, and it, it's still alive because it is mixed in. Uh, even in English, we have Native American words such as uh, chocolate. Chocolate is not even an American word. Chocolate is a Mayan word. It comes from a, a Phoenician family word. Um, popcorn. Popcorn was invented by Native Americans. Uh, so next time when you're at the movies, make sure that you thank the Native Americans for even making popcorn. Um, uh, there's also a movie that's coming out that uh, on my uh, Facebook uh, page I've been not so much protesting, but uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln, uh, the president, uh, Abraham Lincoln. Uh, there's a lot of things that are hidden or not told. Uh, I forgot, like, I, I brought a bunch of paperwork, I had forgot it, but... Uh, Last year, around May, there was a discovery of some archives in the Library of Congress uh, signed by Abraham Lincoln, which on the first day of his, uh, the first day of him being president, he hung 500 Native Americans uh, all at once, uh, and then turned around and freed, uh, make slavery against the law. So, to me, it's kind of, uh, I don't know. Uh, because in the movie, I'm pretty sure they don't have it in the movie. <laughs> it's not in the movie. Uh, maybe Freeing the Slaves, uh, um, the Civil War, you know, stuff like that. But there is nothing about it the first day that he hung 500 Native Americans um, in South Dakota. Um, a lot of you probably know about John Bidwell. Uh, um, a lot of you probably read in history books that he was a good man. Uh, that man, I don't want to call him a pedophile because I wasn't back then, but he also took a 14-year-old Indian girl and married her before he had his first wife. And they had a, a daughter, which uh, lives out, used to live in Chico. Uh, there was Henry Asbill, a man in Chico, uh, Matuta Indian uh, grandmother. Um, he also was buddies with John Sutter, down there at Sutter, uh, Sutter's Fort down in Sacramento. And together, there is, uh, I noticed that there might be a documentary coming out, I'm not sure, but I know that there is paperwork and the research being done on a Native American slave trade, which took place right here in Northern California. Uh, John Bidwell said that uh, he furnished Indians with the home and, the, and food and protection. Uh, in my research, and it's my opinion that uh, he was nothing but a slave owner uh, of Native Americans. Um, the same with John Sutter, who would send his, he was, John Sutter would capture his Southern mighty uh, men and women and send them by train up here to work for John Bidwell, and they would trade Indians back and forth, back and forth. Um, also out here, uh, like I was saying, this was the last, uh, one of the holding areas where they would send the Indians from the hills down here. Uh, there was also, uh, hunting parties that would go up here to Concow Valley, Yankee Hill, Polga, right up here in these mountains right here, Tail Mountain, probably right up here in these hills up here in the back. Um, and they were hunting parties for human beings, and they would hunt us Native Americans, uh, I say us because it was local, so it, it could have been my relatives, I don't know. Um, they would get 25 cents for a, a man scout, a Native American scout, a dollar for each child and each woman. Um, and, and that's not just to say scout. If they brought back an ear and they could prove that it was Indian, they would get paid for it. So there's things that are in, that we're not taught in elementary school, that we're not even taught here at View College, uh, or probably most of the universities around the country. Um, about what really happened to the Native Americans in America. Um, a lot is uh, focused on uh, uh, African Americans uh, um, or, the, or the, the Jews in the, in the Holocaust when we don't even look and realize that there was a Holocaust right here in the United States of America. 
uh, where millions and millions and millions and millions upon millions of Native Americans were slaughtered and put into uh, mass graves and just buried. Uh, in, in, in Canada last year, uh, they, a church burned down, a Catholic church burned down. And underneath that church, I had to, I had to relook at the numbers over and over again. They found 50,000 human remains of small children underneath this church, and they all the DNA from every bone came back to be Native American. In Canada, in a church, underneath the church, which was supposedly supposed to be a boarding school, like we, uh, my uncle was talking about uh, the boarding school. Um, so my object here today wasn't, uh, you know, I was going to talk about the language and the culture, but I, uh, like I was talking to the facilitator, uh, Brendan, and that I really wanted to send a message that uh, I want to tell the truth. I want the truth to be known. Um, that not only African Americans or Jews or uh, whatever uh, were killed off or there was a genocide amongst them or a Holocaust, but also Native Americans. Um, my son comes home, my, 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 all my kids come back from school and they tell me, well, this is what the teachers teach and this is what the teachers teach. But then when I turn around and tell them something else, they'll get in trouble because they tell the truth. Uh, they'll get suspended or get in detention, which, which I think is wrong. Um, so what, what I'm trying to put together, I don't I'm, I'm not trying to put together, I'm not part of a movement or anything. I just, uh, I fill myself up with so much, uh, so much information that I have to let it out because if I don't, then I'll go crazy. Who knows? Uh -oh. <laughs>